Welcome to this week's edition of Sports Week Merseyside with me, Phil Woods, and... Matt Braffell, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, are you? I'm not too bad, not too bad, so... Um... Interesting show today, because later on we've got a baseball star coming in. Baseball star in Merseyside? From Liverpool. Oh, okay. No, yeah. <clears throat> oh, we're all about it. We get, 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 get the exposure for the, for the minority sports. Yep. We should get a banner. <clears throat> we'll get Chase in for this interview. Will we? Yes, because he's American. He's the one that told us to, that there was a baseball team in. in Did Liverpool, he know? Which oh. It's great to know. It is. I mean, you know, there's 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 lots of lots of pockets of lots of um, sports that on what we would call mainstream, and yep. if we can do our little bit to at least give them a little bit of advertising, a little bit of exposure in a friendly and family friendly way, we will. And um, we should do. We should do because Absolutely. you know what? If they've they've got to get people involved in it to keep themselves. Uh, occupied, yep. you know, we're all coming out of lockdown now, all looking at doing things that are outdoors. Yeah, and so more like, power to anyone that's doing that type of stuff, mate. I think. Yeah, yeah. Can I, do you <clears> know <throat> I play? Be able to play? Um, I don't know. Have you recovered from your injury yet? No, I, I got I got an X ray and I've got a hip impingement. A hip impingement. Yeah, I know what it is. It's a well, basically, word, basically, word, I'm going to have, have to go a new hip in about ten years. Nice. Yeah, I know. I'm so young as well. Really? Uh, not really. <clears throat> oh, well. I don't feel it anyway. Well, um, we've got a few things to talk about. Yeah, a couple of bits um, and pieces. First of all, okay. big, big weekend for Tramia. Uh, started, it didn't start so good yesterday though, did it? <sighs> I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 well, at least we weren't on national television and in, oh. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we kind of yeah, were. We kind of were. It seems to happen that, doesn't it? Though, when we're on national no, television. I don't, you say that, but we did well the other week when we played Sunderland. We, we did. They were singing our praises, and then it was all pre match, wasn't it? Oh, Tramia played fantastic, and Tramia we did well against Sunderland, and they're really good. And then we just absolutely the bed. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wet it, the bed. <laughs> yeah, wet the bed. Yes, uh, <coughs> so Friday's game wasn't good. And, no, no, um, poor. Gotta have a response on on Monday against. Cambridge. I think so. I mean, yeah. Let's take the positives out of it. We we are one point worse off and mm. one place worse off than we were heading into the weekend. We were third, and a point in front. You know, we were third on goal difference, and now we're fourth and one point behind the team that's in third. So it, it could have been could have been worse. Oh, it could have been worse. You know, you know, so you know, to get it out of the system, <clears throat> um, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of statistics and analysis in my job at my normal job. So uh the, the stats show that we've got to do something that we haven't done if we've got to have a really really bad run now because we've generally sort of had a one defeat and then that one defeat has sort of been followed up by a series of wins and draws. Yeah. So um, we don't tend to get beat too much, and you know what's going to happen now on Monday, don't you? Sorry, everybody. <laughs> mm, yeah, Paul Mullin, the hero of Watford. Yeah, I mean, it didn't work out necessarily for him when he was with us, mm. um, and I think that had a lot to do with he was just behind better strikers at yeah. the time, but the strikers that were on form, and you know, realistically speaking, all right, he's gone to he's gone to Cambridge, he's uh, pulling up trees at Cambridge. There was no evidence based on what he did at Tramia to say that he was going. He was capable of that or doing that. No, nope, but he has. Know, and he has fair play, play to him. him. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. you look at look at Norse. Norse was with Forest Green. Didn't pull up trees. Come to us, mm. and now he's playing for Ipswich. Yeah. So absolutely. it just goes to show sometimes these players come in, hit a bit of a purple patch, and it's a lot. To, I'm a great believer in you have to have the right environment, and sometimes you players do. have to have a right environment. Mo Salah, Chelsea, didn't work. Yep. Absolutely come to right. Liverpool. What are you yeah. going to do? Tearing up trees, isn't it? Absolutely right. <coughs> Tearing up a lot of trees t- today. I am. I am. Yeah. I'm, 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 good I good it's phrase. Like, the clocks phrase. have gone back. I'm out in the garden now. <laughs> <coughs> Fair dues. Liverpool are away at Arsenal. Um, in, in, in. Can we... we can it's, it's, y- it's, it's yesterday when the show goes out, but, but it's, it's today in, it's when in, we record it. I mean, everybody knows we record it 58 minutes. Have we got any team news? Can I have you a can have a look at some team news. While I just talk about... Um, <coughs> what's coming up? So Liverpool away at Arsenal tonight at eight pm. Yeah. Tomorrow, Everton home to Crystal Palace. Big game that. Big big game. Big game. I tell you why it's a big game because West Ham are away at Wolves this weekend. And yeah, that's yeah. tough. Yeah, we'll know because your 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 tip for third. 
Oh, no, well, your tip for breaking into the Champions League place. I wouldn't say third. Fourth. Fourth. Um, but but away, away at Wolves. Wolves is always a difficult place to go. So this, this is an opportunity for, for Everton and Liverpool to um, break back into the European places if, if they do something... Yeah, yeah. Speaking. I mean, you know, it's uh, I'm just looking at this now. So there's four changes for Arsenal and two changes for Liverpool. Jota has dropped to the bench. Really? It, it's breaking news. Obviously, it's not breaking news because obviously everyone reading this yeah. or watching this tomorrow will know by now. But you know, it's breaking news for us. The confirmed team. So Allison, um, Trent Alexander Arnold, uh, Phillips, Kabak, Robertson, Firmino, Milner. Thiago, Salah, Firmino, Mane. Well, Salah, Firmino, Mane. So it's just it's a given, isn't it? Really? Yeah, they should be um, scoring more goals. <clears throat> oh, Abamyang is back in for uh, Arsenal. He's Ooh. been brought back into the fold. <sighs> Ooh, it's tough. How do you think it'll go? Um, yeah, it's even if we get this right, people won't believe it's recorded. We should no. We, we, <laughs> okay, is, is it uh, Arsenal? It's at Arsenal. Yeah, Arsenal one, Liverpool two. Do you know? I think that'll happen as well. I I think Liverpool might might actually score more than two. Mm-hmm. I think Liverpool may get three. Well, if they if they win two one and and then people will not believe it's recorded. Yeah, because you you just said I think that too, but maybe they'll get three. Yeah, no, I th- I I I, I, could, I think no one. Uh, maybe that two is a Liverpool win. I can see Liverpool beating Arsenal. I, I genuinely can see Liverpool sort of turning the corner with regards to the form that they've Have been to. on. Um, maybe that little bit of an international break has helped. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't have very many players involved in any of the in the internationals. Obviously, Robertson disappeared off to Scotland. Um, there was no no guys. We covered. We did in cover the, nobody in the England team. So they've had a they've had a good bit of a rest. Did Did you see Jurgen Klopp's comments about um, Trent Alexander Arnold playing for not playing for England? No, no, I didn't. What did he say? <laughs> He's, he he was saying that it, um, he, he doesn't understand it. Because Trent Alexander Arnold for the last three years has been the, the best right back in in the world, and just because he's had a couple of games and not so not so not so clever, he's been dropped. But he said England must have an absolutely brilliant team if they've dropped him. Well, it's odd that he would make that comment because if Alexander Arnold goes off the boil, would Klopp keep picking him? Or would Klopp bring someone else in the Liverpool squad in if he was really off the boil? Well, he's proved that he had changed things whenever he feels like he had taken Jota off. Yeah, of very much. I mean, I'm I mean, quite surprised at that. I, th- I think that's obviously not mind games, but obviously Klopp supporting his player, which you know, fair enough, he needs to do that. But mm. I think there's a little bit of bigger picture here. Like you've got a lot of quality fullbacks. Yeah, Southgate doesn't have a squad. As such, per se, he has access to any fullback that is English qualifying. He can yeah. pick from. It doesn't matter whether they play for Newcastle or Aston Villa or Liverpool or Everton or Watford or Shrewsbury yeah. Town. He, he can go and pick who he wants as long as they qualify for it. So it's a little bit naive to turn around and say we haven't got, or you know, we've got better, or we haven't. He doesn't feel that we've got better players because well, we have. We've got Kyle Walker. Yeah, He's a yeah. Good player. Fair dues. We've 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 got a couple of good um a couple of good uh, fullbacks in that position, and if someone's off the boil and another one's fighting, that's the whole point of fighting for your shirt, isn't it? Absolutely right. How do you think Everton will do uh, <coughs> home to Crystal Palace? I think that's a win. Um, I, I, for me, I'd again, agree. I I I think um, again, I I think that it's it's a good game to come back from. Yeah, it is. Do you know what I mean? If if you're going to come back, I mean, I'd rather have. I'd rather have Everton's fixture coming back off an international break than Liverpool's fixture. Yes, definitely. I think home to a Crystal Palace, it would be, uh, you know, it's, it's a winnable game for them. It and is a winnable you, you, know, you know, the last thing you want to be doing is, like, coming back from an international break, you've got your, you know, your teams together, and then you're boarding a plane and disappearing down to London to play one of your main sort of rivals, you know, yeah. in terms of Arsenal. I mean, obviously, they've gone off the boil a little bit in terms of Champions League places, but historically, they're a strong team. Yeah, the... Nice stadium as well. I've been there. I uh, have you. I have. I, yeah. have. I tend to when I go away with work and stuff like that. I tend to have a little bit of a look at what I can do. So I've uh, I've ticked a few boxes. I've been to the stadium a lot. I've been to both both Arsenal's new stadium and I've also been to Tottenham's new stadium. Oh, cool. Tottenham's I've been to Sutton United as well. Special. Sutton United. I have. I've watched Croydon. I've yeah. watched. I've been. I've taken any football, me. Oh, absolutely. Um, so you're going for a win? Yes. Yes. 
Um, Will Wolves do West Ham and do uh, the Merseyside oh. clubs a favour? No. No. No, I don't think they will do. I, I think um, all is not as uh, it's not as rosy with the, in the Wolves camp as I think it has been over these last um, couple of seasons. They've, they've been a bit Jekyll and Hyde Wolves yeah. for me. But they're still a good side. Oh, no, there's no doubt they're a good side. I mean, you know. On their day. How, how can you have the Portuguese national team turning out in the Premier League and not being a good team? Well, no. Yeah. I jest. Yeah. I jest. But they have got some quality players. They, they definitely have. do. But um, West Ham will be too strong for them. Okay. Uh, moving on to rugby now. And rugby yes. started a couple of weeks ago. And um, it's yep. it been an interesting start. Um, Warrington Wolves... Uh, didn't start so well against Castleford, did they? No, no, but uh, put things right. Put things right. Firmly and squarely put things right. Well, good, a good game, really, I thought, to, to have, to, to respond to um, the the defeat against... Um, mine's gone blank. <laughs> it was uh, Castleford. Castleford Tigers, yeah. oh my word. 21-12. It's been a long day. Um, yeah, yeah, so th- they did. So perfect game, um, Lee. Lee, yeah. And boy... Did they take their frustrations out? How, how did how did, you know? Tell us a bit more about. Um, how yeah, did so get on? they comprehensively won 44-12 uh, in favour of 12. the wire, um, and you know they did they did what um, Warrington are capable of. They scored a fair few tries. How many tries? I think six. I Look, think not six. Bad. I wasn't watching it because do you know what? It's thrown me this all go into a central venue and playing the games I and know, stuff yeah. like that. And I, I got used to it. I thought, oh, Friday. And then I was, I was like, oh, no, no, it started on Thursday this week because Good Friday was on and they're not bad. At you. I know, it's confusing. So, confusing. yeah, I missed the game. I didn't see it. So I was absolutely gutted to see that um, they'd run a little bit of riot against Lee. Well, um, there's plenty of games to go. You, yeah. You can watch. I'm Your sure. guys did okay. St. Helens? They did. They're, they're, they're on fire, aren't they? Well, yes. I mean, uh, to 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 win a game of rugby to nil. Oh yeah, it's 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 it, the it, holy grail when you're yeah. nilling a team. But if you can nil a team, then you're doing something right because yeah. it's a hell of a, a, hell of a hell of a performance. It is to nil somebody, and then obviously to do that to to Hull KR as well. Yeah, um, decent side. Who, and also because obviously it's the, it's the um, it's the, the tribute weekend to one of their players, isn't it? The fellow that got injured last January, M- Moss. Uh, I can't think. I was watching it today as well. I, my brain's gone to putty, so rugby league fans mm. out there, I do apologise. But they've been doing it. It's been a bit of a, bit of a tribute weekend, and for him, uh, obviously, he's had to retire um, due to a spinal injury, and he played for Hull KR. So they, they've done a bit of a tribute for him, raising oh, some nice. funds for him and stuff. Um, and you know, best wishes to him. Get back on his feet. Absolutely. He took his first few steps unaided uh, only this last week. Um, but a horrendous in- injury to have, and then obviously um, all power to him for getting back on his feet. But the rugby league community doing what the rugby league community does, which is get together, raise some funds for a cracking cause, and they're all in it together. And there's a few lessons that other sports could learn from their approach to things. I think so. I think so. It's a, it's really good. Yeah, but I uh, thought they would have had a bit more motivation, Hulk KR, given the circumstances. That was the point. But yeah. So to get um, nailed, you but, thought they had a little bit but to play they, for. They were facing St. Helens, and St. Oh, Helens yeah, is just are. ruthless. Yes, yes, both in attack and, as it would appear, defence. Yeah, they, they just are. And um, you know what? You've not got on the, on the on the on the thing that I can see here. Go on. What have I oh, missed? Yeah, you have number nine. Number nine. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, the championship. Uh, we don't. We haven't. Done, we haven't talked about that yet. The uh, league below the Super League. Yeah, um, yeah. Witness, uh, who who are traditionally. Uh, uh, a Super League t- side, really. Well, they've they've yo-yoed, haven't they, over the seasons? Boing, they've boing, gone, yeah. they've well, gone up and down, and up West and down, Brom. and up and down, and down and up and up and down, and stayed down, and then come back up and done okay. Yeah. And then it's not, it's never worked out. Um, I think it's fair to say stability. for the witness fans, yes, there's never been a, a period of stability in the uh, in the Vikings camp um, and established uh, within Super League. Uh, I, the sooner they get back, the better for me. I I, I quite like the uh, the fact that we have. Well, technically, they are a Merseyside team. Well, yeah, they are just it's about. Just about. Well, Cheshire, it's a yeah. the class is Cheshire, but I don't. Know. Yeah, it's just about. We're we're we're, we're going to talk about them on our show. So, well, if we're talking about Warrington, yeah, and, uh, and Saints, we've got to talk about um, Witness. Yeah, so they get the, they get the championship season up and running. So with um, a trip to Newcastle, yes, yeah. Uh, so who who are also a decent side, not a side you'd associate with the Super League so much. No, but they are a decent side. If, 
finish at the top end of the championship quite a, quite a lot, and not just never quite make it. I think the thing is with the with the championship, a lot a lot of teams are that's their ceiling. Yeah, um, because obviously to, to, with the way the franchise system works and everything else, the, the the promotion side of things with with Super League, you you have to have a lot of money to get in. Yeah, um, and, and Lee themselves, obviously, we just talked about Lee. Lee were um, knocking on the door, but chose not to apply to go into the Super League at one point, even though that they were set up to do so. Because obviously, there's a, a fair amount of financial commitments with, with to, be, to be able to commit to doing it, and obviously, we so, saw what happens when you commit to do it in terms of Toronto, and then obviously they yeah, they, yeah. they COVID hit and they couldn't sustain the uh, the financial model in the COVID times, and they disappeared and couldn't fulfill the season so a lot of teams in the, in the championship tend to just stay there they're they're happy that that's the level and and you know are, are probably london, can't afford it really are the so. london broncos still there i uh, believe so but i think they're quins or broncos to be honest with you I don't, I'd, it's been a while since i've listened and watched oh, okay. a, bit, a, bit, a bit of the a bit of the, the london side of things but that, that's another thing that never really sort of worked it, it went to London and they, they sort of became Quins and then a little bit of London again and yeah, I think they must be in the championship. It must be there. Well, I'm I'm well, well. If you if you talk about um, I don't know, you talk about anything boiling, how to boil an egg or anything you want. But, but I'm going to just um, just have a look at the roadmap back to playing uh, American football in the UK. American football in the UK is that like actually the American football? Uh, the Pro- not, not NFL coming over. You're talking about American yeah, um, football. Yeah, there's, there's, there's <coughs> British uh, British sides, British leagues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we will be speaking to um, the Liverpool team. Okay. Uh, at some point, um, but the uh, stage one, um, the go back to training, non-contact. Um, <laughs> Hang on a second. Yeah, Amer- <laughs> anyone anyone out there that's ever watched American football, uh, contact is kind of a key part to it. But the first the first stage and second stage, you 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 actually as an individual. Yeah, uh, there's no competition. Okay, for the first two stages, well, and it's you individual. You can't touch each other, so no, no contact. So I don't see where it's individual good, training it? basically. Okay, um, and then stage three, uh, contact comes back in mm-hmm. small groups. And when's the stage three? What, what are we talking dates wise? I'm just going to have a look at that now. Um, it doesn't it's actually insane. say what what it's saying on here is depending on what the uh, NHS say. Yeah, it's a bit, it's see, a bit I wouldn't have thought that the flaky been, really. It, so to me, if if well, actually no, I suppose Super League have got all sorts of protocols and testing and everything else like that. I, I imagine American football being very much like grassroots. Rugby league and rugby union, in terms of the, it's not they, they can't do things. They can't replicate what they, what happens in the professional game no, in terms can't. of testing and protocols and stuff like that and sanitizing and you know all of that. So they're they're going to be on a slightly delayed timeline. Yeah, coming back in. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, it's I've just timeline shows that that it doesn't give you any time. To, a, time, a timeline with no time. A timeline with no time. That's what we've got. But American football will be back in the UK, and um, I, I, I suspect it'll be around about June time. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously once the once the did the clocks have gone now, haven't they? The clocks have gone forward. We all lost an hour's sleep this time last week. Tell me about it. Um, still trying to catch that up myself, to be honest with you. Um, so the nights are the nights are getting longer. So the likes mm-hmm. of these. Sp- you know, everyone in terms of training, there's no yeah, more indoor training there. Everyone's outside. Do you know what? I, I actually drove past a couple of parks. I digress here away from American football a little bit now. We've uh, yeah, so go and seeing seeing all the grassroots football back. Driving past a few of the parks and watching all of those games. Yeah. I literally saw hundreds of kids on last Monday. That's good. That's good. And finally, yeah, um, we've got to discuss last last weekend's first Formula One race. Wow. Didn't well, see yeah. that coming. Did you not? No, I, I, I thought Max Verstappen, I thought Red Bull had that, and Max Verstappen was going to take the first win. But what? It, what? I, the reason I say wow is what I didn't see coming was such close competition to Mercedes. No, yeah. Um, after the last six years, yeah. My son's the F one in our in our in our in our house, and he turned around and he he said. I get the impression that uh, Mercedes weren't going all out in testing. 
Yeah, that's no, that's normal. I, I and they were definitely hiding, sandbagging. Things. Yeah, yeah, they 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 might have been not necessarily pushing the car or themselves as much to 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 maybe lure their their opponents into a false sense of yeah security, and that didn't really turn out but to be the case because Red Bull have obviously uh, they've got a car there. They have, and they, they and they've got a driver or yeah, two. Oh, and Max Verstappen is quality, but he fin- and so is so is Sergio Perez. I mean, yes. the decision not to go with their um, younger uh, Pierre Gasly, mm-hmm. Daniel Kvyat, or from from the Alpha Tauri team. Yeah, yeah. Um, decision to go or to go out and go and get Sergio Perez from what was Racing Point. Yeah, uh, was it was a great move. Because the problem Max Verstappen's had every season is he's not had a backup man. Yeah, he, he struggled because um, he needs somebody to, to to keep those Mercedes at bay. Well, he's he's got that now. He's got that now, and it uh, he has. But he didn't work out on Sunday, did it? Because it because Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes, uh, as far as um, as far as like the strategy, they they trumped it. Yes, they did. They did. They did. But onwards and upwards. When's the next one? Uh, next one's in. Uh, it's actually there was a three week break, which surprised me. But it's in Italy. In Italy, Monza. Nope. No. Imola. Imola. Okay. Yeah. So why uh, did I think Monza? Because that's they they go to Monza as well. All oh, right. Is that the European one? Or no, it's, they, it's it's just because they, uh, they cycle it between it. They luxury because of COVID. To, yeah. In last season, what they've done is they introduced more. Um, so it's more. It, it's more. Uh, the American races were off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Australia and yeah, stuff. Yeah. China. So they introduced some Euro- extra European races and some, you know, it was, it was the Europe and Middle East. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So, Fair enough. Um, so that's in a couple, couple of weeks and um, we'll see whether or not Mercedes have uh, caught up any because I, I, I do think that that Red Bull car was the fastest. It yeah. just it it was just but it's no good being the fastest strategy. if you've got not you need it both you need there's three elements for me you've got to have a driver yep now this might be controversial this one and I have this argument with my son I think majority to to drive a Formula One car you need to be of a certain quality yes you do and I think you could take most drivers and swap them into most of their other cars and they would be able to perform once they got used to that setup. Yep. I think that the technology yep. and the budgets for technology are the big, the big, big uh, difference. Yep. And I think if you put the likes of Lewis Hamilton in an Alfa Tori car, he would not perform. And I think if you put one of his drive, one of the Alfa Tori drivers in a Mercedes then that would make him better. Well, yeah, I mean, George Russell Russell proved uh, last year, didn't he? One race. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he should have won it. From a, Will- yeah. from a Williams at the back, straight into a Mercedes, yeah. straight out. I'm not I'm not saying sports. it's not a skilled sport. You, you, you have to have well, you, a certain amount of skill as a driver to keep a, a car like skill. that on a, on a track and I, race it. But I think interchangeable-wise, there's a lot in the technology there. There I is. think I think that's the great equal. That, that's the great differentiate the budgets that you've got. Well, um, the budgets are changing this year. This year, uh, the budgets of oh yeah, you've got them points things, haven't you? More equal, so um, it's looking. The teams are closer, but you still got to compete with the technology. And Mercedes have got better. Yeah, it's the brains, isn't yeah, it? Behind yeah, it, it's the brains it is, behind it. it, brains behind it. So, uh, but I, I had a privilege. I tell you this before we finish, um, or before we go to the interview. I had the privilege of driving a Formula One car at Silverstone. Did you? Only on a straight, and it was a forced India car. When I was, when I was, I was editor of a motorsport magazine at the time. Oh, you know? And Did you um, go sideways most of the time? It's supposed to be really hard to keep control of. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and I was only loud on the straight. Yeah. And I, I um, stalled it 12 times. You stalled it? 12 times. 12 times. It's hard. <laughs> I mean, as I say, I've said actually. that you've got to have a you've got to have a certain amount of skill to drive those that, cars around for me. But yes. controversially, I would suggest that the skill set of the majority of the drivers is 
broadly similar. It is. It is. You're absolutely right. I, I totally, 100%, absolutely agree with you. Thank you. So, shall we move on? And, yeah, of course. Uh, so we get our, our guest, guest in. We yeah, shall do. Dave. Um, so we'll get Dave from the Liverpool Trojans in, shall we? We shall do. We shall do. Let's have a chat all things baseball and Merseyside. Yep, indeed. We've got our guest on the show now, and it, I'm going to introduce him. It's an interesting guest this time. Uh, not that the others weren't, weren't interesting. <laughs> they, they were, I've just offended Mark Pallios and everybody else. No, but this is different. This is um, this is the well, he's a former manager. He's in, been in charge of the youth. It's David Martin Byers uh, from the Liverpool Trojans baseball team. Hello. All right. All right. Welcome, Big welcome. Welcome Finally. to the show. And we've got Chase with us today as well. Yeah, that's right. I'm Matt just Chase. Matt, as usual, as you know, but Chase, he's had to get involved because uh, he's American and uh, no other we're going to go straight into it, David, because okay. the first Good. thing I want to do is ask you to, to, just get it out of the way, explain to the British public what the difference is between rounders and baseball, please. Here we go. Right, well, this is a question we get all the time. So, um, And I can understand it because it's the nearest reference uh, point that people in this country have got to baseball um, for the most part. The biggest differences are in um, rounders, you've got five bases. Okay. And you carry your, your bat around with you. It's a lot shorter. In baseball, you've got four bases. You've got a bigger ball and a bigger bat, which you drop once you hit the ball. Okay. Um, and it's just... Played on a far bigger bigger pitch. Okay. Um, in terms of pitching, that's different as well. There's an over, well, it's generally overhand um, pitching, and the strike zones, which is the, the the target area for the pitcher, is different. It's um, very uh, smaller, I'd say, in, in baseball than it is in in rounders, which I believe is from shoulders to to knee. But okay. I don't really know too much about ra- rounders apart from. Um, I played at school a long time ago. Yeah, we all snap. Is, 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 yeah. is rounders underhanded? It's what? It's rounders pitched underhanded. I yeah. thought you were talking about the game being yeah. underhanded yeah. then. It's like, yeah, yeah. It? No, no. What I'm just trying to know, because what I'm trying to say is the other differences is like there are two forms of baseball. There's baseball, which is a hard ball, and there's softball, which is a bigger... Well, that's called is softball. Is it, is it Don't softball. get complicated. All right, bro. I was just trying to... You know. <laughs> I've seen that. <laughs> it's called softball. But softball is pitched underhanded, while yeah. hardball is pitched overhand. That's what I was trying to say. And well, d- David has been... Uh, involved with the, with the Liverpool Trojans for a long time, haven't you, David? And you've, you've had several roles. Tell us about some of those roles. Well, I've been involved with baseball longer. So it's 91 I started playing baseball. Um, okay. When I joined the, the Trojans in 2008, actually for the second time, because I did join 10 years before that when, when I first came to university and I first came to Liverpool. But that was only, only for half a season. I had to go back in the summer. But when I joined properly in 2008, um, I, I joined as a player and um, the, the club really was on the verge of uh, collapsing, really. Um, right. We had um, dwind- dwindling numbers. The, uh, Robbie Orm, who was the, the in charge of the, the club at that time, uh, with his wife Jill, they were emigrating to Australia. Right. And um, being the kind of linchpin to the club, um, they pretty much performed a lot of the functions that the committee does nowadays. Okay. So once they went, there was a, there was a massive vacuum of um, leadership and we didn't actually complete that 2008 season, and we had an emergency meeting in uh, in in the, the winter where we got we we got a new committee together, right. and I think from then on we went from strength to strength. I was part of that that um, getting involved with the committee side of things, which I hadn't I hadn't really planned to, but it's just the way things turned out. And then over the next ten years, I was uh, I was a club secretary. I've done a bit of tre- um, being a treasurer. I became general manager for a few years. Okay. I was a second team manager when we uh, expanded the club um, to have a second team because the, the interest was so great. And I was seeing um, players coming along, sitting on the bench for the first team. I thought, well, there's, there's actually, um, I think we've got potential here to create a second team. And, it's, and that was a great success and it's kept going ever since. Okay. And um, more recently, I was first team manager for two years, although one of the years was the, the lockdown year last year. So we right. didn't really play any any uh, games as the first team and um, this year I decided to step back from the first team manager role and I wanted to focus on something that I think has been lacking for a long time in the in the Trojans and that's been the youth side so okay I'm gonna hopefully well I will 
got to be positive. Oh, we can take this on and try and create this uh, youth program in the summer and just see where it goes. Well, I mean, you've come, you've come into it um, at a point when the club was going down the pan. Basically, you you've managed to turn it around, and you're quite a confident guy. Uh, it's obvious, <laughs> okay. and um, you know you you're gonna you're gonna do the you think from you're gonna get that from strength to strength. Can can, can anybody go along and try it? You can't. No, I, I, no, I can't. <laughs> that's that's pretty. Um, I've seen you holding a cup of tea. You can't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anybody apart from me? Yeah. Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you this two things. You, Phil, you can absolutely come down, and you're more than welcome <laughs> to come down and give it a go. Oh, so, <laughs> Really, I was rubbish around us. <laughs> well, it's a different, completely different it sport. <laughs> he couldn't catch a cold. It, this is someone that fell in the bath the other week. Had a week off because he fell in the bath. <laughs> oh, I saw I the, the, the soap incident or something. It wasn't. Yeah. It, it wasn't was soap incident. <laughs> yeah. I told you, I, didn't, I haven't been in prison. It wasn't a soap incident. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah fair yeah. enough. It, it's open to anyone. There's two things. Um, um, the sport is very accessible, so. If you look back in the history of baseball, you've got Babe Ruth, uh, the first big superstar, um, megastar of the sport, okay. arguably in, in professional sport. And he, he was a He, was a he wasn't guy. athletic, was he? Not, not no, <laughs> he was not athletic at he all. He was strong, yes. but he, 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 wouldn't, he wouldn't run, you know, 10 miles. Yeah, he had to hit it out the stadium to give himself enough time to get round. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's... That, that's doing him a bit of a disservice because he had he, he was strong and he was um, like fairly agile for his size. Um, yeah, but yeah, you, yeah, you're right. He did rely on the home <laughs> he, he definitely lot. relied on power, didn't he? He was more power than precision. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Babe Ruth's so good they named the candy bar after him. I like so, the candy bars. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the the uh, right, okay the the scene in the UK. Um, so your first team uh, is you know. Is there a league? What What's the situation? How does it work? So um, at the moment, we've got a Northern League. And okay. it's an independent league. Um, we we well, It consists of teams from Liverpool, Manchester, uh, Sheffield, which has got a really strong baseball scene. There's, there's I think, four teams going there uh, from Sheffield. We've got Hull. We've got as far north as Durham. And so this Northern League is split into three divisions, AAA, AA and single A. Right. Um, so the Trojans fitting into that, we're going to have a team in each of those each of those levels. Okay. Okay. And so the history of the Trojans, have you have you won the league ever or come close? So it's complicated because um, over the various years, leagues have come and gone and we've been okay. part of the sort of National League and then we've come out of the National League. So, looking back, um, back into the, in the seventies, there was a heyday of Liverpool uh, Trojan baseball, and in nineteen seventy six, nineteen seventy eight, and nineteen eighty, they won the, the national championships. Yeah. So, legitimately, they could say in those years they were the best team in the country. Yeah. And in fact, in nineteen seventy six, there was this um, all star American team that had been brought together because of it, it was a, the um, bicentennial of the American yeah. birth of the American nation. Mm. Okay. called the Spirit of 76, and the Trojans mm. beat them in the final oh, down at Rosslyn Park oh, wow. in, uh, in London. So, oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Chase. Yeah, it sounds good. The British baseball. <laughs> but, yeah. There's a UK team, isn't there? A Great Britain team. Great Britain team, yeah. Yeah, there, there is, yeah. And um, at the moment, it's um, there's, a, it's, there's a lot of uh, American-based players that play for that team. So right. there's, there's some domestic players, but... I th- their focus has been more on bringing um, American uh, based or sort of internationally based players that have got a British passport or access to a British passport and, right. and using those players to play in the in these tournaments such as trying to qualify for the World Baseball Classic for instance right okay mm. is okay. this is like pro technical qualifications like your great 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 aunties uncles sisters maybe cobbler. not that far back but I think a grandparent who oh, was, right, okay. who yeah who yeah. <laughs> so do we have like a sort of you know like obviously the FA are in charge of football I assume that there's a British version of the the go- a governing body of the sport or something because obviously if there's a great British team you assume there's a great British sort of baseball association that does that so you're right and it, this is this <clears> is it gets a bit complicated here because there is one recognized national governing body uh-huh. the British Baseball Federation yeah 
However, due to sort of lots of politics and um, different leagues and different regions wanting to do their own thing, uh-huh. there's lots of independent leagues that have either started up independently of the British Baseball Federation yeah. or they've been part of the British Federation and then decided to form their own league. So we fit into that that category. Okay. The, the North was part a division within the British Baseball Federation uh-huh. and about I don't know, three or four years back, we decided, the, the, all the clubs in the North decided to create this independent league to have a bit more autonomy and actually get more value for money. Okay, yeah. So, um, Tell us how how uh, so, so we've all we've already discussed the fact that I can't get involved because can you can I, <laughs> okay uh, trust me I can't <laughs> okay. um, he's right uh, so, <laughs> but ev- everybody else that we're talking to today mm. um, if they think you know what I want to have a go at that tell tell us how they can get involved well the, we uh, we're a growing club um, we've got uh, we've got three teams. Uh, going at the moment we had the first training session on um, Thursday which was meant to be an informal kind of loosener because we've had such a a long time off yeah and we had 33 players turn up for for this and we've got a first uh, um, full kind of uh, divided practice with experienced players and rookie players happening on Sunday and I I expect there'll be more there right Um, so if anyone wants to get involved I would suggest that they get in contact with the Liverpool Trojans. If you search on Facebook, if you search on on a search engine, you'll find um, either the website yeah. or we've got we're on Twitter as well. I think we're on Instagram as well. Uh, Ian Blees, who's a general manager, he he oversees all of these. So yeah. he, he's he's casting it quite wide. So if people want to get in touch, get in touch with with him, and um, they'll be directed to the the appropriate mm-hmm. level. So if yeah. you've played before, for instance, if you're um, if you're Venezuelan who played in Venezuela or American and you've got you've got high level of experience or maybe if you've played for another British club and you've been playing for a, a period of time then probably be looking at the AAA team right if you're brand new you've you don't know anything about the sport but you want to give it a go then it would probably be the single A team right but you, there's, and you be with the kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. Uh, there'll be movement between the teams as well so yeah. sometimes uh, <laughs> i'll leave that one <laughs> yeah the so the so yeah so movement between the teams so so someone gets good in uh, in the triple a or a or whatever it's they, they can move on absolutely yeah some some players are, have got very a very sort of uh, got good coordination athletic and yeah. just take to a sport quicker they may be, they there'll be options for them to move up if they want to or if they, they could be happy playing triple uh, double A or single A, and that's that's yeah. up to them because the social side of, the, of things, because it's an amateur sport, it, that's a big part of our club, and I think it's a big part of the success of the club as well. Yeah, so, so you, you've got you got social events and stuff like that going on, which gets you closer together, and well, you know, you, think, you, yeah, well, you're a team, proper team. I think we've got a, a strong kind of team and club ethos, and um, we like for. Uh, before lockdown, we were doing barbecues after games okay. you know, towards the end of the season, and you know there's there's bar facilities on there, so people be stopping to have, like have a drink. Tailgate or, parties, so, well, uh, tailgate no. parties. Not, yeah. not quite, not quite. No, well. I, mean, I mean that's, that's the aspiration, idea. though, isn't it? It's got to no, be. You know, I mean, but, half a Merseyside pulling into one of the docks somewhere in pickup trucks and with <laughs> Liverpool Trojans gear all over the show. You get to get that 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 you know. I mean, in terms of cost wise. Is it an expensive sport to get into? It can be, but the club provides all new players with um, the use of a glove. Uh-huh. Not to keep, but to use. You know? yeah. And um, um, bats tend to be a team item anyway. So okay. if you if you like the sport, then I would recommend that you buy, your, and you want to keep, keep at it, then buy your own glove, maybe buy your own bat as well. Uh-huh. Um, but apart from that, I think compared to other sports, I think it's quite reasonable. So for first year player coming in, even who's uh, just joined the club, it's mm. sixty pounds for the year. Right. For that sixty pounds is all your training sessions, outdoor training sessions. Um, but it tends to be about five if we, if we had done indoor training, but it's not been possible this year. Yeah, and then um, you can buy your jersey, which is about I think forty forty pounds. So this is the, the jersey here. Yeah, um, but you get to keep that. Um, yeah, and we we play in these as well. The caps twenty five. Um, so I'd I'd say the bare minimum, 
if you want to go for it, is a glove. You can pick one up for 40, 50 pounds. Um, a cap, 25 pounds. And then um, you can borrow a jersey, actually, if you, if you really want yeah. to. But a lot, of, a lot of players like to keep theirs. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. You we, know, what I'm, I'm kind of curious about <coughs> is I have, uh, I'm glad you're going to ask me a question, if you But what I'm kind of curious is, is that because uh, there is this, um, we're in Liverpool, in case you didn't know. But this is like considered like an American sports league kind of situation with the Trojans here in Liverpool, isn't it? Because, you know, you got um, baseball, you got football, you got ice hockey. Do you know what I mean? But this it, it seems to be this underground movement, you know, like especially like with social media. And like Phil was saying, yeah, if you're part of it, you know, like the skulls, right? You're part of it, you will know about it. But for me, I was fascinated because I've heard about this league uh, for some time, and, but I was just wondering how come you know it's not in a bigger, wider scope, and is it just that because I'm not on you know your uh, social media? But I mean, I wondered how you guys feel about it because as you were now explaining it, it seems like man, you know, here in England, especially in Liverpool, it's always about footy football, yep. right? It's always about you know, or maybe rugby, mm. or maybe in a rare occasion you hear about cricket, but you don't hear about American baseball because they call it American baseball, so we don't, you know, don't talk about it. So I just wondered from your you talking about going back to the '90s with this. So I'm really whoa, I'm, my mind is blown. But do you do you see that like less advertising around this sport being played here in England? Well, it's over time, because baseball in, in Liverpool has been around since the 1890s, which is not long after the, the, base, uh, the, the sport was, was formalised, the, the, the rules were formalised in America. So that's, that's, that's mind-blowing to me. Mm. Um, but it, yeah. in, the, in that time, there's been peaks and troughs of popularity. And during those peaks, it would have been, it would have been an impress. I mean, one of my, my projects for the future is to, to have a look through the, the archives of um, the Echo mm. and see, find all the mentions of, of baseball because in, in, on Merseyside, baseball has been, I think, really close to the tipping point of becoming an established mainstream sport. So, for instance, in, in 1935, John Moores, who was the, of the Little Woods Pools um, yeah. fame, he, he had been to America, he had come back, he wanted to create um, baseball leagues in this in this country mm. and it, it would create um, a, uh, a summer version of the pools okay. so for football in the winter mm. and, then, um, and he, he started the league uh, north of England league in 1935 started the league in Humberside and the league in London right um, I don't know what happened to that I think probably the, the war put paid to that but we were so close to to it getting established there were crowds of up to 10,000 who'd watch some of those games but then on the other hand there was there was some some areas got very poor crowds but I think Liverpool has always been quite quite popular for baseball I think it's something to do with um, being a port city and with yeah. links to the yeah the I was going to say that so <clears throat> excuse me historically like obviously you we were a link to the east coast of, of America because obviously a lot of the liners used to come out of Liverpool yeah. you know way back in the day and it was a you know a trade port as well Merseyside from the you know obviously that would have helped you know obviously there were a lot of people that would have gone between the two countries but sort of post war was there any was there any link to that obviously we would have had a, a fair amount of american people around here obviously warrington was a was a big big military sort of place for for america so has that did, did that help or not help you know in terms of participation when we had closer links to america do you think i, I would have to guess cuz I, I i don't really know too much about yeah. that time but i do know that um that at, at the, the, there was a lot of activity going on with with American personnel because our founders, two of our founders, uh, Norman Wells um, and his friend, I think it was Bert Maud, who um, had seen had seen ice hockey, had seen um, um, they went to ice hockey and seen a lot of um, Canadian personnel that had been playing ice hockey, I, I believe, and they'd also watched them um, a lot of baseball. So that at one point, I think in the in the fifties. There was a number of leagues within Liverpool, so, wow. not, so not just a league across the northwest or north of England. In Liverpool, there's various different leagues. So, wow. that, so that to me tells me there was um, there was a lot of um, a lot of American personnel that were probably mm. boosting that. Um, mm -hmm. 
I mean, uh, top of edge um, in Wavertree, I think there was a massive military depot at the top of Smith Dam Road. Mm. Um, I recall seeing some photos of. So yeah. all, all, all that, all those American personnel would have been playing baseball. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I saw one of the one of the lads um, on, on. We've got a WhatsApp chat. Uh, chat. He he uh, shared a picture in town. I think it's near like um, near uh, Dell Street. A bombed out kind of um, background, and Amer- so this must have been during the war, or maybe sh- uh, slightly after the war. But American personnel having the game of baseball. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. You well, know. That's, the, j- just before we finish, um, I did read that baseball had been played at Goodison Park and Prenton Park at Tramia. The, the Merseyside or Liverpool teams had played at those stadiums. Was that at the time when you were talking that the crowds were were up? I don't know because I. Um I'm told that the last game that was played at Goodison Park was 1948, mm-hmm. and that was actually Liverpool Trojans. So right. fledgling Liverpool Trojans, two years old, uh, played at Goodison Park against um, Formby Cardinals in the Lancashire Cup final. Yeah. So that was the last time baseball was played at, at Goodison Park. I've no doubt, and I, but I don't know that they would have played at Prendon Park as well yeah, because they, there was um, a lot of. Uh, uh, Football clubs also had baseball clubs. Dixie yeah. Dean used to play for a, a baseball team. Yeah. Um, mm. In fact, Dixie Dean met met Babe Ruth one time, and Babe Ruth didn't <laughs> believe how little money Dixie Dean got from the gate. Wow. You know? So, wow. so, you know, these two icons of the 1930s meeting, superstars in their own rights, record holders. Yeah. Babe Ruth had the 60 uh, home runs in the season record, and uh, Dixie Dean had 60 goals in a in a yeah, but these two meeting and uh, the disparity between their their income was incredible. Well, that that's a it's a great way, a great place to leave it. Okay, um, it's been it's been absolutely fascinating, hasn't it, Chase? Yeah, yeah, no, I've no, really, exactly. Really enjoyed having you here today. It's, um, it's great to chat. Normally, I have to try and find people to talk baseball with. No, but no, no, here we go. <laughs> well, well, we'll get this out. Well, to where can people find the game? Before yeah, you go? yeah. When when when? What, oh, just, okay, when, before we finish, when. Start? How are we getting out of the COVID situation? That's so we, uh, the first, we're going to start playing in June. They've set the okay. uh, a date. So the first weekend in June, um, I don't know off the top of my head, but it'll be either one of the teams will be playing at Bootle, um, in Bootle, Maguire Avenue. Maguire Avenue. But I, I, I recommend anyone just get on the social media, search for Liverpool Trojans, yep. and everything else will unfold from there. I, I would say so, because I, since I've done that, I've seen a lot. So thank you so much for coming in. Pleasure, it's been a pleasure. It's been wonderful to have yeah, you. Thank, thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that was a very interesting interview. It um, was. Baseball. It was. I, to be honest with you, I didn't, you know, th- mind-boggling that, Dixie Dean and Babe Ruth met and compared know, yeah. their records. <laughs> Things, you know, I mean, obviously, I, I'm, I'm aware fully about who they are. I know Babe Ruth's a huge American um, baseball star, and I know Dixie Dean's a huge Merseyside football legend. Yeah. But I didn't know they met. I know. Incredible, incredible stuff. Some interesting stories. And uh, obviously, if you, the viewers, want to get involved, um, you follow them on social media, as as he said. And yes, Liverpool Trojans. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna have a big condo day out, aren't we? And go. We, we may go and see them. Go go take a take a day trip to Bootle. Yeah, in our first, six, in six only six of us. Yeah, in our, yeah, the rule of six. Rule of six. Yeah, how many t- how many players are in a baseball team? I don't know. Six, More than six. Six aside, it's gonna be, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's <laughs> right. Uh, League Two table. League um, Two table. Very important because uh, Tramier now in fourth on s- with 63 points. That's seven points now behind Cambridge. Yeah, with the game in hand. With and and hand. we play them on Monday, so it's uh, not disastrous. I mean, obviously, uh, I, yeah, we can pick the bones over yesterday. I'm not going to, you know, it's dawn and dusted. It's There's done. no points in we, there. If we, no one played well. We got we, absolutely battered. True. We move on. But if we beat them on Monday... Yeah. We're then just four points behind with the game in hand. Yes. If we're not game in hand, we're just one point behind. Yes. So it, it can all change again on Monday. Of course it can do. I mean, it's, it, 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 it's a funny old game, as it someone once fun- said. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> it is a funny old game. A week's uh, a long time in football. A week is a long time in football. So in the Premier League, um, should we just have a have a have a look at what's going on? Yes. Man, Man City beat Leicester 2-0. They did, they did, they did. Um, 
And let's look at the table. So, so the interesting thing here, uh, and we touched on this before, yeah, um, is is the situation with West Ham. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got now uh, four on Liverpool and Everton, both on forty six points. Yeah, Everton have played a game less than Liverpool. Yeah, and on forty nine points in that Europa League spot is West Ham. Uh huh. Um, and they play Wolves. Yeah. Touch on yeah, that. yeah. So if if they I mean, you think that they're going to be too strong for Wolves. I tend to agree with you. Yeah, I think. You know what's going to happen there, don't you? Wolves. It's going to be a draw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a board draw, nil-nil. Whatever it is, <laughs> we would have got it wrong. Yeah. Um, but it's a big. Op- it could be a big opportunity for the for the Merseyside teams, Liverpool and Everton, to actually get in that spot. If if Wolves can turn over West Ham, and it could happen, yeah, then we could see Liverpool or Everton. Yeah, in that Europa League spot, we could do. And then, if they're in that spot, they could only be a couple of points behind the Champions League place. Yeah, there's still still a bit or to go. All change again. Still yeah. a bit to go, isn't there? Um, well, Liverpool have got Villa, haven't they? Next, yes. After, after this weekend, the, the, the after Arsenal, a few sleepless nights for a couple of the Liverpool players. I think this week, <laughs> yeah, they'll be uh, after. A few, uh, uh, I think they'll uh, want to beat Aston Villa, don't you? I, they might have a bit of motivation. Mm. They, might, they might have seven reasons to do something seven about reasons, that. Yeah, I know that was crazy. <laughs> that, that was uh, arguably the start of it all. It really was, yeah. I think you know they, they were. It went, you know, downhill well, I, from there. You know what I said though? Uh, I think well, maybe on our first show. Yeah, I, I believe it's it goes back to last season. Yeah, no, it definitely does. I think that they 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 they, the they stumbled across the line. They, they they were so far ahead they didn't need to. No, it was just yeah. a matter of time, wasn't it? And and and, and as was the case. But he wasn't playing yeah. so. But yeah. so. But they've got a they've got a bit of a little. They've got a little a tiny tiny away trip. Tiny tiny week. Yes, they have. They have. It's not really that important. No, no. I mean, I knew they play in some, some Real Madrid or something. Madrid, yeah. yeah, some small team. You like might that. have heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> So they've got, <laughs> yeah, Champions League time for Liverpool. That's uh, important because at the moment it's looking like the only way that they're going to qualify for next year is potentially the only way they've got a route into the, to, it, to the Champions League is to go and win it. If the Manchester clubs and Leicester and Chelsea <coughs> pull away, then yes. Mm. Um, but well, I'm Chelsea not, got beat today, though. They did, and they got hammered. Yes. Five. I watch. I watch. So, just it must be something in the water. Teams that shouldn't, on paper, look like getting beat, getting hammered. Yeah, West Brom, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. They played well. They they thoroughly deserved it. Uh, five two. Yeah. So, but that what that does is put is if Liverpool and Everton win this week, mm. it puts them right in touch with the, those those Champions League uh, places. But by virtue of the fact of that I think that's what we need. What Liverpool effectively need. Manchester City and Manchester United to run away with this and in doing so like has happened today them beating Dispatch. Leicester, Leicester and, and then obviously uh, you know it's a cheeky bonus West Brom doing a, doing them a job doing them a favour at, uh, at Stamford Bridge today it is so um that's league two. We do, we do, we've done. We've, we've done, done league two. two. We've done, done league two. two. We've done, we've done the we Premier don't League. Do it again. No, we don't want to do it again. We don't. No, we don't. It's been a long. That was week. a great interview. How's that? <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's not, no, I'm joking. Not, yeah. I, I, I'm joking. That that was a that's that's an in joke. It is an in joke. It is an in joke because we did five takes at the start, but now Blake is not paying any attention whatsoever. Oh, he's, he's smiling. So, Someone's put batteries in him. So we, <laughs> it's that. Um, yes, we've got to break this. We've got to break from the Super League. Have we? What we we have. We've got oh, yes. the um, challenge cup. the Challenge Cup weekend, and what a couple of fixtures. Go so on. Warrington away to Swinton. Uh, Swinton and uh, yeah. Manchester side, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so away win there. Yes, hopefully. Uh, but Saints versus Leeds. Oh, a big battle. <laughs> yes. Uh, Saints win for me. Saints win for me too. So we can see Saints and Warrington getting into the next round of the Challenge Cup. That'll do. Yeah, that'll do us. That'll do us. As long as they don't meet each other until the final. No, no. 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 And uh, yeah, that's so that's it really. That's it. That's yeah, that's it for this week's show. Um, it's been really good. I've... So interesting having the baseball um, chat. Really interesting. And as you pointed out, the Dixie Dean and the history and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely I mean, it's, 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 you know, we've got, we, we have a steeped history, a connection, the Liverpool um, with America. Yep, um, yeah. As I said in the interview with the ports and the war and everything else like that. So it, it stands to reason. Yeah. When you say that, but that baseball's got. Don't um, mention the war. 
No, yeah, but it stands to reason that obviously American sports have a yeah. root in Merseyside, given our connections True. to them. But uh, let's let let let's get some. I like let's get the Ameri- American football one on. We're going we, to tr- got, we, we got, will do. We got someone from the next the week. Roller? Yes, Liverpool, yes, we have the Liverpool Rollerbirds next week. We have Chase is going to look forward to that. Are they one. coming in? I don't know. Can we set up a? Like they can skate around the desk. I don't think Blake will like that. <laughs> no, I, I, I think he's he shaking will. his head. He's not having that. Uh, no, no, he's, he's too many cables, destroy and lights and equipment. wires and bits yeah. and pieces. But uh, are we? Are they coming in? To the show? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I, they either come in or we'll do a Zoom interview at some point. Oh, see if they can come in. I like it when we have people. Yeah, I like it when they come in as well, especially when the yeah yeah. When they're um, interesting. when it's interesting, when it's interesting. I mean, yeah. not that we've had any boring guests. We haven't. We've we had haven't, Roger in no. was great. Roger was great. Um, um, we've this week. We what this week? Yeah, we had this week. Yeah, this week. David in this interesting. week, and then we can get somebody in. Yeah, we, yeah. fingers crossed. We get somebody in from the the, the roller birds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it'd be good. All right, thank you. Good night, and thank you for good night. It's afternoon. It's only one o'clock. It's good, good night from me. Enjoy the rest <laughs> of your Easter Sunday. Yeah. And um, it's goodbye from me and goodbye from. Yeah, goodbye from me as well. Stay safe, everyone. And you. Bye bye. Bye.